on this week's show, Georgia Southern announces some coaching changes on the football staff. We'll discuss that. Eagle great Adrian Peterson enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. All that and basketball updates as well as we welcome you inside the Eagle's Nest. Welcome inside the Eagle's Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, it's never too late to talk about football. We did get some big news this past week as the schedule was announced and the head coach, the interim was taken off of Chad Lunsford's title and he was announced as a new head coach. And now we're slowly seeing some names trickle in as to filling out his staff. We do know for sure that they are replacing the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, and we do know for sure that Victor Cabral will be coming in as a defensive coach. What position yet? We don't know. Your thoughts on what we do know? Well, right now, uh, it's in that weird moment for a lot of the coaches who haven't been dismissed, as you said, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Uh, They are gone in uh, Brian Cook and uh, Lorenzo Costantini. So those two guys no longer in town. Everybody else also not in town because they're on the recruiting trail and they're kind of in limbo, I know, but this is kind of what coaches sign up for. They know that they might have to talk a guy into Georgia Southern today, might be told that they're leaving Georgia Southern tomorrow, might try to take some of those guys with them. Who knows? That's you know why they call it a carousel. It's not just with coaches this time of year. It's with recruits as well, especially with the earlier recruiting signing period coming up in just a couple of weeks. So right now, the entire team kind of in flux. I would say the one thing that they have going for them is that you do have now a head coach that's entrenched in Chad Lunsford. So he might need to tweak a plan depending on what coaches he can get onto his staff, but he's got an overall vision for where he wants his team to go, and he can sell that vision to the coaches who are out there and hopefully in a couple of weeks have a few extra guys uh, who are seniors in high school right now agree with that vision and sign on to be Eagles. Right now it seems like the leading candidate for the defensive coordinator's position is Scott Sloan, who did uh, have a brief stay at Georgia Southern, is is currently the co-defensive coordinator at Appalachian State. No word as of the time we went to shoot this. Um, on Wednesday as to what was going to happen there. But I guess the bigger question is the offensive coordinator because the names that are being batted around, you've got Mitch Ware, you've possibly got Grant Chestnut at Kennesaw State, which would be a totally different look. And then you've got Atkins down at Tulane, who was here before. He's their offensive line coach. If he comes, does Bob Bodine leave? Does Atkins take another role besides offensive line? I think the offense seems to be the bigger question of the two because even if Sloan comes or doesn't, you're not going to change things too much defensively. Yeah, and again, that goes to what I just said about the moving pieces. Obviously, uh, Coach Lunsford has one of those names that he would prefer over the others. Even if you think all of them would be suitable, there's definitely one that you're going to talk to first or offer the job to first, and it depends as you said, kind of where these guys line up in terms of what positions they coach as well as how they would run an offense as to who on the current staff you can keep, who you might have to let go of or start looking for someone who runs a different style at that position and would fit into a new uh, offense. So really, I think that you can do a lot more speculating about names and uh, all that once you get that defensive and offensive coordinator set in stone. Once you do that, those two names combined with uh, what we know from Coach Lunsford and what he said in the past, that makes it a little easier to see what other dominoes are going to fall into place. Now, I wouldn't imagine there would be anything major change. It's going to be similar to what's been going on. Maybe if you bring in an offensive coordinator who's a little more comfortable under center, maybe you do a little more under center, but you're going to still do some offense out of the shotgun, there's no doubt. And I would think even if you brought in an, uh, someone in the shotgun, there might be some elements under center continuing in the future. You're not going to all of a sudden bring in some offensive coordinator and start throwing the ball or running a pro-style offense. Yeah, I think that uh, you've seen over the last few years, uh, there were some fans that were terrified when uh, Coach Fritz and uh, uh, Atkins, who was on that staff and uh, offensive coordinator, um, Ruse, when they were here running that shotgun option, there were some fans that were terrified. But you'll notice that 
a lot of that quieted down when the wind started piling up, when the points started piling up. So, of course, there are people who would love to see the same exact offense that Paul Johnson was running with Adrian Peterson. And that'd be great if it puts points on the board, if it puts wins in the win column. If it doesn't, then people will get just as tired of that. So I think that that's all that's on Lunsford's mind right now is what group of 10, 11 coaches can I get together that we're all going to be able to decide on one vision and then get those players who are already with the team as well as some recruits coming in in the next couple of months to be able to execute that vision and turn it into something a little bit better than 2-10. and 10. I think the bigger problem, though, has been in the offensive staff is putting people in that are comfortable with the offense that you're running. I know that didn't happen the first time around, uh, summer's first year. The second time around, you brought in Brian Cook, you brought in Bob Bodine, both guys who would prim- primarily under center, and you asked them to go into the shotgun and run, I think, that's the problem is they've been trying to run Willie Fritz's offense without anybody with Willie Fritz's background, and it's a little tough to do. I think they made some progress, but you still, if that's the, the road you're going to go, you've got to continue that process and have some people on the same page because I think when you've got different people in different parts, sometimes you end up trying to jam a, a square peg in a round hole. And I believe that's why you're hearing some of the names you're hearing, even the ones who haven't officially been linked to Georgia Southern yet because you've got guys who have coached together. You've got guys who have coached at Georgia Southern before. You've got guys who you'd be linking different coaching staffs together and can figure out what one was doing, what what the other was doing. You know, if you have some of the names that have been discussed, you go all the way back to the Mike Seawalk era and span every single coaching staff that has been here since then if all those names would fall into place. So I think there you at least have a lot of uh, uh, starting points where you can uh, see where some guys' philosophies are coming from, where others are coming from. And I think it makes it a little easier to, to link up into what I said, that one cohesive uh, idea where everybody can work together, everybody be on the same page from day one. And funny you bring up Mike Seawark because even his name is being uh, thrown out as a possibility of coming in as the offensive coordinator. All right, well, speaking of the Mike Seawark days and the Paul Johnson days, that brings us to... Our congratulations go out to Adrian Peterson. A lot of great segues this week. There you go. For being enshrined into the NCAA College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, The ceremony was just held up there in New York, and you've got a chance to see him play. I had a chance to cover him and see quite a bit of his games, and and, and we can't uh, express this strong enough. As good as a player as he was, or great as a player he was, even a better guy, even a better uh, speaker and and, and can speak to a lot of heartfelt things that he's gone through through his career. Yeah, the few times that I've met him, it was after his playing days, and I agree with you, couldn't be a nicer guy. Goes out of his way to to address everybody uh, when he comes to town. And when you're Adrian Peterson, that's a long line of people wanting to shake your hand and get two words in with you when you come to town. But I I think what, uh, you know, certainly you don't have to, talk to too many people for too long to get all the praise you'd ever want to hear for Adrian Peterson when you're at Georgia Southern, when you're in Statesboro. But what really impressed me was how at that banquet last night with names like Peyton Manning, Steve Spurrier, everybody there knows exactly who he was too. No one's mixing him up with another Adrian (laughs) Peterson who was a good running back in his own right. But everyone knows that he still has a record, the FBS record for career rushing yards. That number would be even higher if, if you, you could can, count some yeah, games players. that are counted now in the postseason. Yep. So you, I think that when you talk to the most knowledgeable and the, the most elite at the top ranks of college football, if you say the name Adrian Peterson, you're going to get the next question of which one. Yep. And that, that's that's perfect example of, of where he sits because you mentioned it, you know, over 6,000 yards, the all-time leader still – and you know, to have been able to watch him and, and, and for Georgia Southern fans to be able to have experienced some of that greatness uh, was a pretty special time, and we congratulate him and his family on that induction. All right, well, Mike, shifting gears now, we go to basketball. Adrian was a pretty good basketball player by, by his own right as well, uh, so they're trying to get a segue into this, but Georgia Southern men and women, uh, the guys, we're home this past weekend. They're, they're home again coming up. 
The women have kind of been a little up and down. The guys seem to have maybe righted the ship a little. Uh, not that it was going down, but they did have a brief two-game losing streak. Yeah, a brief two-game losing streak we talked about last week being at the end of a, a really long and tough road trip against some very quality teams. They got uh, they got back into the win column last week with a runaway victory in a game that they were supposed to win pretty easily. Hopefully they got a little bit healthier as well during that road trip. Ike Smith goes down. He tweaks an ankle. They've been resting him a little bit. I guess if you're going to have to find a time to rest him, this last couple of weeks would have been the time to do it. You've got a little bit easier competition. You're back at home. The final schedule means a lighter schedule. Uh, the, the game last Saturday was their only one of the week. They don't play again until this next weekend against Savannah State. But after that, it's time to you know, start racking up the sky miles again. Another long road trip going to George Mason, always a solid team. And then they make a return trip to Cal Bakersfield, who, you know, did them the favor of coming in and really taking one on the chin a couple of weeks ago. But this is a good Bakersfield team, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago when we were praising the Eagles for that big win. But now they've got to go the whole way out to the left coast, see if they can't make it a season sweep. Uh, As for the women, uh, uh, thought that they were on the right track. They had won two games in a row after starting out one and three. Had an early lead against Savannah State last week, but just had it kind of fall apart on them in the second half. Couldn't hit many shots. Savannah State got hot. A big comeback attempt in the final couple of minutes, but they fall just short. They're now 3-4. and four. They'll look to get back on track with a road game as well on Sunday going to UCF. All right, so next up, the Eagles at home Saturday uh, against Savannah State. That game, 5 o'clock tip-off. 5 o'clock tip-off. All right, so get out there to hand her in. Check out the Eagles. All right, well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week. All right. Do you have your email called up? I can. Do me a favor. I need to just double-check on some where basketball teams are.